Hello, my friends. Welcome to my corner. Back in 2014, when Patrick Modiano won the Nobel Prize in Literature, I had not read a single book by him. So what I did is what I usually do. I just ran to my local used bookstore and I went there to see if they had a copy of one of his books. By some kind of a miracle, I found a copy of Missing Person, which is one of his most famous novels. And back then, one of the few that had actually been translated into English. So I read it, I absolutely loved it, and then from that point on, I could just not stop reading Patrick Modiano. Every time that he releases something, I, you know, I just run to the bookstore or my local library, and I get a copy of his latest book, and it's such a pleasure, you know, to be able to re-enter the fictional world of Patrick Modiano. Though, as you may know, we really have to be careful when we talk about Modiano in using the word fictional. Because how fictional, really, is his world? That is something that needs to be addressed, you know, and it's something that we are going to talk about uh, briefly in this video. So I remember one time uh, reading that in an interview, Patrick Modiano has said that, in a way, he had only written one book and then he had proceeded to rewrite that book or to approach the same themes from different angles. So for that reason, many readers find him to be repetitive. That is not the case with me at all, okay? I actually would say that I, I really like and I really enjoy that familiarity that I find when I, you know, read one of Modiano's books. So instead of saying repetitive, you know, I would say that to me, Modiano is really consistent. I really like that. I love the themes that he explores and I just love his work. So for that reason, what I wanted to do today is to share some ideas with you on his latest novel, Chevreux, uh, as it's known in the original in French, but in English it was translated as Scene of the Crime. So that's what we are going to be focusing on today. So this novel was originally published in 2021, so it is quite recent, and it was translated into English this year, 2023. So it's really a fresh book. I get the feeling that this is from my library and I get the feeling that I am the first person to actually use uh, this text. So that always feels nice. It was translated by Mark Polizzotti, so he is quite familiar with Modiano's work. He has translated at least 10 of his books. And he also translated Flaubert, Marguerite Dura, and uh, other great French authors. So I can tell you that the translation really reads very well. Now there's an interesting thing about Scene of the Crime, and this is it. This is a sequel, okay? It's something that doesn't happen very often, uh, and I think this is the first time it happens within Modiano's work. But this is a continuation of a particular scene, something that happened in a previous novel, the one titled Suspended Sentences. So if you read Modiano in English, you may have a volume that is titled Suspended Sentences and includes three novels, right? One of those has the same title as the collection. It was published in 1988 and Scene of the Crime takes up, you know, a little bit of a narrative thread from that earlier novel. Now, I do want to say this. You can totally read Scene of the Crime independently, okay? Don't feel like you have to rush and, and read the other novel first, because this can totally be enjoyed even if you have not read the other uh, previous text. And let me tell you, quite honestly, Suspended Sentences was actually one of the Modiano novels that I enjoyed the least. So that's just my opinion, you know, just sharing that with you. I enjoyed all of them, but that to me was one of the weaker uh, novels by him. So what is Scene of the Crime about? Very briefly, in a nutshell, you know, what we have here is the story of a man who is trying to make sense of some confusing events that happened to him when he was a kid. So as I read the novel, I'd like to think that an alternate title that I would give it would be The Kid Who Knew Too Much, okay? And with Modiano, as usual, you cannot really go into too much detail when it comes to the plot because you don't want to ruin the experience of the reader uh, of this text, right? But that's all I'm going to say in terms of like a quick synopsis. Then, uh, let's look at the structure, okay, or the contents uh, and the structure. As a matter of fact, what we have here, we have 157 pages exactly and uh, it is divided, the narrative, into 30 chapters. So basically we're talking about a an average of maybe five pages to a chapter. These are really, really brief, especially towards the end of the text. You're going to notice that the chapters become uh, shorter and shorter, which is really interesting. And in terms of genre, as always with Modiano, what you have is that beautiful, unmistakable, and very personal blend of memoir and mystery. This is Modiano's trademark. Okay, you're going to find this in all of his texts, 
all of his novels, and I think it works very well. Now, because Modiano is, as I was saying before, consistent, right, not repetitive, but consistent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to favor in this video a thematic approach, okay? So we're going to be looking at his work in terms of different themes that you will also be able to find in other novels by Modiano. So that's another thing that I like about this approach, that what I'm going to say applies, of course, to this book, because this is the one that I am reviewing right now, but you can apply many of these ideas, themes, concepts, leitmotifs to his other novels. So. Let's see what we have here. You may have heard that Modiano is very often compared to Marcel Proust. Now, why is this? Primarily because Modiano is also concerned with two very big and very important themes, which are time and memory, and of course the relationships that exist between those two. So many of his stories you will find are triggered right, by a sensory input that you find at the beginning of the text that would be the equivalent of Proust's Madeleine dipped in tea. So Modiano gives you quite a bit of that. Now, in the specific case of Scene of the Crime, what we have here is a place name. Place names, as you know, were also very important to Proust. So uh, the name Chevreuse, which is the original title of the novel in French, as I was saying before, that is what triggers the narrative and what triggers the trip into the past. And also immediately after that, a song. You know, so I was thinking, you know, this is something that most of us can relate to. You know, when you hear a song and you know that that song is somehow meaningful to you, you know, you have heard it before and it has some meaning for you, but you're not quite sure why, you know, it's like, you just have to know, right? When did I hear this song before? Why th does it, you know, awaken these feelings in me? So that is exactly what happens to Patrick Modiano's narrators and to his characters. That is exactly the impulse that just plunges them into the past so that they can find out why a given thing was meaningful to them. In this case of Scene of the Crime, the name Chevreuse and the song that the narrator talks about immediately after that. So we have that sensory input and that is how the whole narrative world of Patrick Modiano, just as it was, it was the case for Proust, comes alive for us readers. The past is never dead. It is not even past. Yes, my friend. So, uh, pop quiz here, okay? Pop quiz. Who said that? Okay, that's very easy, but uh, specifically in what work, okay? I'll give you the answers at the end. This is completely spontaneous here, but let's go with that. Uh, I mentioned before that Patrick Modiano usually writes in that blend of memoir and mystery, right? And in his novels, what you're going to find is that the mystery is always the protagonist's past. Okay? This past that is never dead because it is not even past. And his characters are always trying to find access to that past, sometimes by drawing a map. And I mean that in the literal sense, many times you're going to see in many of his novels that the actual physical map is actually important. There is a mention of a map in this novel right here, Scene of a Crime, but also in a metaphorical sense. Right Now, they try to draw these maps to gain some access to their past lives, who they were before. But they realize that once they draw the map, that map is full of holes. It's full of blind spots. And it's because memory is like that. Memory is imperfect. And we cannot have a full grasp, a full comprehension of that past experience that we have. Our memories are actually full of blind spots, full of places in the map that we cannot access to. The past, this is something that Modiano kind of conveys in his novels, it cannot be relived, right? You cannot bring back the past, but you can access it in a way, right, to a certain extent, because the past is not really past. It is also present right now, right here in the present. Now, how do you access the past? Precisely, as we were saying before, through this stimuli, right? This sensory stimuli. In this case, the name of a place. It could also be a song. It could be a taste. It could be a smell. Any of those things. So through those elements, these are kind of threads that you can follow, right? They, they are clues into the past and his characters are well aware of that. And that is what drives them, okay? This obsessive need to get in touch again with their past. You're going to find that Modiano's world, and most of the time when we say Modiano's world, we are talking about Paris, but not necessarily, is a blurry world, okay? It is a world that is just about to dissolve and to 
disappear. And most of the time when I read his novels, I have a hard time telling whether I am reading about reality or about something that is happening in a nightmare or in some kind of a dream. Let me share with you a quote from his latest novel. You're going to find this on page 40. And this is what it says. For years he'd been used to living in the narrow margin between reality and dream, letting them illuminate each other, sometimes blend together, while he continued on his way with a decided step, not deviating by a centimeter, which he knew would have upset a precarious balance. On more than one occasion he'd been called a sleepwalker, and to a certain degree the word had seemed a compliment. Once upon a time people used to consult sleepwalkers for their gift of second sight. He felt no different from them. What mattered was not to slip off the ridge line and to know just how far one can dream one's life. I like that idea very much. How far can you dream your life without it becoming something completely ungraspable and you losing just your identity as it happens to so many characters of Patrick Modiano's. Because uh, to forget is to succumb to oblivion, his characters have this need to remember. And it's kind of like an obsession. If you forget, basically what happens is that everything will disappear. The world around you is just going to disappear. And because you are a part of that world, by extension, you are going to disappear too. So this is the struggle of the typical Modiano hero or anti-hero, however you want to call him or her. Right? Because there are some uh, female anti-heroines in Modiano's work. Not many of them, but there are a couple of novels by Modiano that are narrated by female characters. And they are actually very interesting because they are different from the rest. So if the place disappears, you disappear with it. I would say if somebody asked me, okay, what is Modiano about? I would say Modiano is about the struggle or the resistance against forgetfulness. This is the main theme of his work and you find that definitely here in Scene of the Crime. Another constant in Modiano's work is the presence, the hazy presence, I would say, of an elusive woman. You're going to see that many of his characters are looking for this woman from the past, this very elusive figure that is in itself kind of a metaphor for the past. So the woman represents the past, just as the characters are trying to get in touch with their former selves. Maybe they feel that if they can grasp this woman, right, they will be able to grasp who they are and to understand themselves a little bit better. In the case of Scene of the Crime, the woman's name is Rosemary Crowell. She is a woman that the narrator met when he was a child. So once again, you know, the woman and the past are very closely uh, tied together. So to the narrator, he feels that in order to understand himself, he needs to get in touch with this woman and to understand how she was connected to the other characters around him. Very shady characters we have here. Something went on when this character was a kid that he cannot explain and he wants to explain that and maybe he thinks by having access to his story through the, the eyes of this woman he will be able to understand that. So really when the one, one of Modiano's characters is looking for the past or looking for the woman he is actually looking for himself because he is a mystery to himself and that's where you see the connection once again between mystery and memoir. Sometimes Modiano's novels are examples of meta-fiction. This is not always the case, but it is sometimes the case, and I have realized that many of my favorite novels by him actually have that element of meta-fiction. In the case of Scene of the Crime, this element is really subtle, okay? It is not overdone at all. That's another thing that I like about him. I do not like the heavy-handed type of meta-fiction, but the type of meta-fiction that Modiano does is not like that at all. Let me give you an example. At one point, the narrator is thinking about something that he said in the past and he has all of a sudden this doubt he's like did I actually say that or did I just add that now 50 years later as I am writing the story so that would be an example of the type of metafiction that you find here also later on another quick example uh, the narrator and the protagonist receives a letter from one of his readers. So he's an author, he's a rather famous author, or at least well known. He gets a letter from one of his readers, and that is one of the chapters of Scene of the Crime. So it's that kind of thing, you know? Now, this idea of metafiction to me is connected to Modiano's main theme, because basically uh, by writing, what you can do is to give fixity 
to the past. It is a way of grasping the past, of making it stick to the page so that it doesn't completely dissolve. So you can see the connection right there between the act of writing and the act of grasping and comprehending the past. I want to share a quote with you that deals directly with this topic and I think is uh, very interesting and that kind of summarizes in a way uh, some of the um, elements of Modiano's approach to writing and to this idea of grasping the past. So you're going to find this one on page 24. Since he couldn't relive the past and correct it, the best way of rendering those ghosts harmless and keeping them at a distance would be to metamorphose them into characters in a novel. So you have ghosts from the past, how do you deal with them? Well, precisely, you take them, you convert them, you make them into characters of a novel, you turn them into fiction. And that is one way of dealing with a difficult past, which is something that many of us do. You know, many of us keep a journal, many of us uh, believe that by writing something down, you can maybe come to understand it. Maybe it could be a kind of a cathartic uh, effort or a cathartic type of impulse. Uh, when I think of this, I think of Cortázar and his story Circe, right? Circe. Uh, he said that at that point he was having trouble. He had this obsession that maybe they were there were insects in his food. And after he wrote that story, which deals with something similar, he uh, got rid uh, of that obsession completely and he was able to go on with his life. So metafiction, catharsis, all of those are also present in Modiano's work and you can definitely see that in Scene of the Crime. Bottom line, I absolutely loved Scene of the Crime without calling it a masterpiece or without calling it one of uh, Modiano's best works. I wouldn't even say it was one of my favorites, but I would say it's really, you know, maybe an 8 uh, out of 10 points. That's what I would give it. I thought it was really good. I read it very quickly, maybe in, in 24 hours. You can probably read it a lot faster than that because I am quite a slow reader, but I really enjoyed it. And then the ending was really good. Without spoiling, without, you know, anything like that, um, Modiano's endings tend to be open. That doesn't mean that they are unsatisfying, but they, they tend to have that openness to them. Now, in Scene of the Crime, the ending has a little bit of, twist, of a twist, okay? So that's what I liked about it. You'll see what I mean if you read the novel. It has a little bit of a twist and it's really, really interesting. I thought it was a really nice touch. Just for a little bit of context, my favorite novel by Modiano is Out of the Dark, Du Plus Loin de l'Oubli, as it is known in the original title in French. And my least favorite is one titled The Horizon. This one has not been translated into English. Out of the Dark is. So I highly recommend that one. I recommend Missing Person. Another one that I really, really liked was Honeymoon. Uh, in the Cafe of Lost Youth is another one of my favorites. And I would say, you know, Scene of the Crime is, is really high uh, up there, right? So that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much, because it reminded me of Modiano's best work. So I think you're going to love this novel. Uh, even if you're new to Modiano, I would say try this one, you know, by, by all means. It's not one of those that you want to stay away from. It is really a good introduction. And if you like this one, then you're going to love all the others. So it's a, it's a good place to start. Oh, uh, before I forget the answer to uh, the quiz. So, uh, who said the, it, the past is never dead, it's not even past? Uh, of course, William Faulkner in, to be honest with you, one of my least favorite books by him, which is Requiem for a Nun. Okay, I hope you loved it, but, you know, honestly, I, I did not like it as much, especially when you compare it to other works by uh, William Faulkner. And I think part of the reason here, it's, you know, digression here, part of the reason why many people do not like Requiem for a Nun is because is it is a sequel to Sanctuary, and it is not really on the same level with that novel either. So, do you have any questions, comments, recommendations, recipes? You know that they are always welcome, and I always respond to all of them. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful day.